rocking the baby while she sleeps. Oh, sweetheart, you need to just sleep train that baby already. Aunt Karen, I don't know the first thing about sleep training. There's just so much information out there. Every parent may have a different idea of what sleeping through the night actually looks like and what sleep training actually is. In this video, we are going to talk about both of those things as well as breaking down all of the crazy amount of information that you are overwhelmed with seeing on the internet. My name is Missy Yondo. I'm the owner of Slumber and Bloom. I'm your mom life bestie and your pediatric sleep coach and potty training coach. I love sharing tips and tricks about sleep training, potty training, and all things motherhood. So make sure you subscribe to this channel and click the bell so you get notified every time I put out a new video. So I'm gonna jump in strong here and I'm gonna let you know that we need to break the stigma that sleep training is bad and or that sleep training is going to damage your bond with your baby. None of that is true. And there's actually so much research done and so many studies done to actually disprove this theory that sleep training is bad for your baby. If you are interested in deep diving into some scholarly articles on sleep training and not being damaging to your baby, check in the description box down below for some articles. So I like to take a research-based approach to sleep training as opposed to an emotional-based approach to sleep training. Some parents choose not to sleep train because they feel that emotional connection with their baby and having their baby sleep nearby, being awake multiple times at night with their baby and maybe feeding their baby back to sleep. And if that is what you enjoy doing with your child, then it's fine. You don't have to change it. I am not here to tell you that everyone on the planet needs to sleep train their baby and their babies need to sleep through the night and everybody needs to be sleeping on their own independently that's not what I'm here for I am here to tell you that if you are unhappy with your and your child's sleep situation then I can help you and you don't have to go at it alone so some parents choose to sleep train their baby if they are awake several times during the night I'm talking every hour every two hours or rocking your baby to sleep and when you go put him or her down that your baby wakes up every single time you try and put him or her down. Um, that can cause some problems for parents, especially parents who need to get up and function at work the next day or even just function as a human in general. Um, sometimes for those reasons, parents choose to sleep train and that's totally Fine. Other reasons why parents may choose to sleep train is because their child has developed a negative or unwanted sleep prop association. Now we can break this down into two different categories, positive sleep associations and negative sleep associations. Now you and I, we both have sleep prop associations. For me, I like my fleece blanket and my satin pillowcase. And I like to sleep on my stomach with one leg up and my arms up, <laughs> sleeping with my hands on like near my face. So. That is how I like to sleep. If I am not in my own sleep environment, I don't sleep well. So for example, I went on a girls weekend vacation a couple weeks ago and the very first night that I was there, I didn't sleep that well because I wasn't in my own bed. I will say, however, I did bring my fleece blanket with me and that did help me sleep better, but not having my own pillow, my own blankets, I mean like my comforter. I didn't have my comforter from home and just not being in my own sleep space was a little bit different. The curtains in our room were not blackout curtains. So I tried to make the room as blackout as possible without looking like a complete weirdo to my best friend. Um, although she knows like my seriousness with sleep. Um, but I tried to black it out as much as possible but that sun came popping in early in the morning and I was like, why am I awake right now on vacation? There are no children jumping on me. I should not be awake. But regardless, um, the second night I did start to sleep better there because I was getting more used to it. That was a winded explanation of adults having a sleep prop association. However, your baby can have a sleep prop association with something like a pacifier or a lovey if they're old enough to have one or a special blanket if they're old enough to have one. But some babies have a sleep prop association with being nursed to sleep, bottled to sleep, being rocked to sleep, bounced to sleep. I can't tell you how many parents I've talked to that have told me that they are bouncing their baby to sleep on an exercise ball. I can't even imagine while that parent is getting a great core workout and their abs are probably like coming right back into shape since having their baby. 
I just can't imagine having to bounce my baby to sleep for every single nap and bedtime and in the middle of the night because they have that sleep prop association. If this is like speaking volumes to you, then you may decide that you want to sleep train your baby. A couple other quick reasons why parents may decide to sleep train their babies is just general bedtime battles. Some parents will say, it takes me two hours to get my baby down for the night, but once they're down, they do pretty well, but they still want to make changes. That's totally fine, totally acceptable. I can help you, I'm your girl, hit me up and we'll get through it. Or I have parents who come to me saying that their babies are overly cranky all the time, or that around bedtime their baby seems super hyper and just not tired at all. Those are signs that your child is not getting the appropriate amount of sleep and that they need to have some improvement in their sleep skills. So for those situations, those parents may decide that it's time to sleep train and that is totally fine. So with all of that being said, I am an advocate for choosing a sleep training method that best fits your child based on their temperament and their development and their personality and also your preferences as a parent. Now there are many, many, many different types of sleep training methods that you can use with your child and this is where parents tend to get overwhelmed because you're seeing information on the internet about attachment parenting and staying with your child until they're asleep. There's information about bed sharing, room sharing, independent sleep. There's information on where and how and when your child should sleep and all the different information on the internet that is just completely overwhelming in the first place and then parents have to decide how they're going to sleep train. Well, this is where I'm going to help you. Whether you prefer to be in the room with your child as they fall asleep or out of the room with your child as they fall asleep, you can definitely still sleep train your baby. Now. As a little disclaimer here about sleep training, no matter what you do to get your baby to sleep at night or at nap time, you are training, AKA conditioning, your child to sleep. So whatever you're doing, it doesn't really matter if you wanna call it sleep training or not, you're still training your child to sleep in one way or another. The same way as you teach your child table manners at a restaurant or at home or at grandma and grandpa's house, you're training your child to act appropriately in certain situations. It's the same thing with sleep training. No matter what you do and what kind of sleep training method you use, you are teaching your child, conditioning your child, training your child to sleep in a certain way. Now let's get into some quick tips that I have for you to help you encourage your child to sleep through the night without crying it out. The number one thing that I will always, always, always tell parents that they need to do is be consistent. Consistency is seriously the one word that I have on repeat like a broken record to every single client that I talk to. When I set a sleep plan in motion, we don't change anything for the first three days because it needs time to settle. Anytime that you're changing your child's schedule, their wake windows, how they're falling asleep, things are gonna get shaken up a little bit and you need to be consistent in your reaction to your child's wakings in order for them to learn how to fall asleep. So consistency is definitely key. The second thing that is going to help your child sleep better is by following an eat, play, sleep routine. Now, when your child wakes up, you want to offer them a feeding. You need to make sure this is a full feeding and not a snack. Snack feedings are just going to encourage your child to continue snacking all day long and still needing to continue that throughout the night. Therefore, taking short naps and waking frequently through the night to have a little snack. The more full you get your child and the more of a full feeding that they are taking at each feeding time, the longer that they can sleep. And another reason that it's important to have that eat, play, sleep schedule is because when your child is eating, you need to give your child an opportunity to move around, move that food through their system and have them digest properly and fill their diaper. For a lack of better words, your child needs to poop out what they're eating before you expect them to take a nap. Otherwise, they're going to wake up with a poopy diaper all the time. In addition to digesting their feedings, you also want to give your child that playtime after eating but before sleeping because you want your child to exert their energy and build up sleep pressure so they're actually tired enough to take a reasonable nap. On to tip number three, you need to focus on your child's wake windows. Following wake windows is important to make sure that your child is not overtired or undertired and making sure that your child is awake for the appropriate amount of time for their age. Wake windows will change with age, which means that your child's sleep needs will also change with age. 
Tip number four is to optimize your baby's sleep environment. There are a few things that absolutely must be had in your baby's nursery in order for them to sleep appropriately. If you want your child to get restorative sleep, your room needs to be pitch out dark. There's a link in the description box down below for my favorite blackout easy window covers. It is what I use in my children's rooms and it is what I recommend everyone to use. And the other thing that I highly recommend using is white noise. If you don't have white noise in your child's room, it's time to get it. I also have a whole video on setting up your child's sleep environment and making it optimized for a great night of sleep. Tip number five is to make sure that you have a great bedtime routine that is consistent, there's that key word again, that is consistent every single night. You need to make sure that even from a very young age, like literally day one, that you have the same routine every single night. As your child gets older, you can begin enhancing this routine, making it a little bit longer, making it a little bit more interactive, and I'm talking reading books, I'm talking about singing songs, I'm talking about actually face-to-face -face time with your child and having that bonding time with your child during the bedtime routine so that your child is all filled up with the love and cuddles that they need in order to be fulfilled and make sure that they are ready for a good night of sleep. Tip number six is pretty obvious, but you need to lay your baby down awake. If you're rocking your baby to sleep and then transferring him or her to the crib, they're gonna wake up and realize that they're not in your arms anymore and they're probably gonna freak out because how did they get from this nice, warm, cozy place being rocked and cuddled to sleep to being in this crib by themselves that they don't really know this space? So if you're putting your baby down for the night and they are awake and falling asleep in their own crib, in their own environment, then they are more likely to be able to transition sleep cycles throughout the night independently without waking the whole family. I really hope this video helped you decide if it is time to sleep train your child and to give you some ideas of how you can improve your child's sleep without using a cry it out method. It's super important to make sure that your child is developmentally ready to be sleeping through the night or just sleeping independently. Sleep training does not mean that you are not allowed to feed your child throughout the night anymore, but the number one thing that you need to do is talk to your child's pediatrician and make sure that your child is developmentally ready for sleep training. I don't recommend sleep training at nighttime anytime before four months old. And even when your child's nights are improving, nap times typically don't become consistent and predictable until closer to six months old. So I would definitely talk to your child's pediatrician before doing any kind of sleep training. Make sure that sleep training is developmentally appropriate for your child. If you've gotten to the end of this video and you're still unsure if your child is ready for sleep training, then click the link in the description box down below and take my quick and easy quiz. Once you take this quiz, it will give you a definitive answer on whether or not you need to sleep train or whether or not you're on a good path. But either way, you are going to get my free baby sleep guide. This guide will be delivered to your email inbox and will provide you with all of these tips that we just talked about and then some. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you subscribe to my channel, click the bell so you get notified every time I put out a new video, and keep blooming.